This conference will now be recorded. Hi, all, all. Welcome to the next session on SAP UI5 and Fury. In the last class, we have discussed about what exactly the JavaScript view and how we can create the JavaScript view by using SAP Web IDE. And today we are going to look it out the XML views, how you can design the XML views. So before going to do that, yesterday what we did, uh, maybe we learned some of the concepts like, so what exactly the, how to create the object of any library. So if you want to create an object of any library, so we are going to use var, the object name, and the new is the keyword to instantiate the clash and the library name and arguments. And inside that we need to pass the properties. And we talked about the view. View is in a UI control and also it, it acts like in a container for all other UI elements. So let's just imagine with the module pool program. The module pool program we have input uh, fields, we have tables, we have the push buttons, we have the uh, descriptions. Here we call it label. We have checkbox, radio buttons, and uh, table controls. So the same thing we are going to design in the web page. How you can design those uh, UI? We call uh, UI terms. It's UI controls actually. So this we call it an UI controls. So if you want to define any UI control, so there is an SAP standard libraries which we need to uh, use. Uh, so who is Pawan Kumar Karu? Sorry, uh, Pawan. Uh, I, who is Pawan? Uh, okay, that's fine. So I think Pawan, I didn't uh, uh, remember his, I know Pawan, but I didn't remember his uh, um, surname, I think, yeah. So, so this is the uh, UI uh, uh, controls. So if you want to uh, design any v uh, UI controls, so if you want to design any view, you need to create an, a view object. So if you want to create an, a view object, so we have an, a library, SAP UI view library, so inside this we provide the id of the view and view name and also what is the type of the view so after you create the view place the view in the html body so we have used the playset method with the playset method we can place your view on the html body and whenever we create an, uh, any project and with a model view controller so from the index.html, we are going to provide an, a bootstrap. So bootstrap will load the resources from the uh, UI framework. And we have an, a view, we have an, a controller. So in the view, there are two methods. One is the get controller name and another one is the create content method. And this get controller name method will get the controller of controller name of your uh, view. and the controller name will be passed to the UI framework. Then it will call, it will create an, a controller object. The controller object will be created in the controller. So controller object will be written back to the UI framework. Then we are going to create an, a view with the content. Create content will create all the, whatever the buttons or inputs, whatever we define in the create content method. This create content method is going to place all your UI controls on the web page. So that's what we have learned in the yesterday's class. And the one more thing is namespace. So whenever you create an, a view, it, it is asking for the namespace. So the namespace here is in a root folder is the namespace. And what are the folder or file which is there inside the folder, uh, which is there inside the folder. If you want to uh, refer that folders or files, we have to use the namespace. So like this. So this is my final root folder is EDG. So if you want to access the main view, we will use edg.view.main. 
suppose if you want to access the file so you can access the file from the uh, same path and suppose uh, if you want to access within the same folder no need to mention the uh, root folder you can use like this okay let's take an example there is a model inside there is a folder so if you want to access within the same folder we can use the uh, same folder starting with the same folder that is that is enough actually but whenever we if you want to use in a namespace in the bootstrap we have to maintain the uh, root folder name so the root folder name will be uh, sap data dot uh, data iphone sap iphone ui uh, iphone resource roots so that is the one which we need to use to mention the namespace of your project or folder so that's what we have seen in the yesterday's class and also we have seen uh, we have created a javascript view so today we are going to create an xml view and so go to the uh, neo trial sap cloud platform Go to the access to the uh, neo trial access to neo trial go to services and search for sap web id double click on this and it goes to the SAP Web IDE. So this is the MVC architecture. See, so we have Okay, so 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 what we did in the yesterday's class. So so go to the index.html. In the index.html, we loaded uh, we loaded the uh, Bootstrap from the SAP. Um, a CDN content delivery network and we loaded the theme we loaded the uh, library and also we have mentioned the root folder so the namespace is in a root folder and we created an, a view object so it's JavaScript always we need to write the code in, in the script and script in the HTML editor and so overview a new SAP UI view and inside that we have passed the property of any uh, view controls and we place the view at the id display so id display is placed in the body of the html and then go to the view in the view so we have an, a method called create content method so in the create content method we have designed a, a one button 
so that button is returned as an uh, o button this is the one of the uh, view design javascript view design and the controller in the controller we we have written a logic so whenever we click on the button a function a event handler function event handler method will be triggered so in this actually we did an a one jquery function set a timeout so every three 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 seconds the button will be appeared so it will enable and disable automatically so that's the function which we did and if you see the controller guys so see here this is very very important what exactly this what exactly this what exactly this so this we call it's an a scaffolding template this we call it's an a scaffolding template this we call it is an a scaffolding template controller so always controller we write in a javascript code guys that's why you can see dot js dot js means it's in a javascript file so we write the javascript code inside the controller the only programming language we write is in a javascript inside the inside the controller so now you can see this is my scaffolding template what exactly the scaffolding template and what is the purpose of the scaffolding template and what is the syntax of an scaffolding template we'll discuss in a minute so what exactly it is then we'll discuss scaffolding template then we'll go with the xml views and so what exactly the scap scaffolding template okay so what exactly it is scaffolding template was introduced so purpose is to maintain the dependencies to maintain the uh, dependency uh, dependent dependencies are dependent uh, dependent objects objects for the controller guys so with a simple controller you cannot do all the functionality so there are there are some dependent functionalities which we need to inherit so if you want to inherit the dependent functionalities we are going to use an scaffolding templates okay let's take an example i need to suppose there is an error i need to do any pop up or else i need to raise any one message so if that is the case we have in a separate libraries so if you want to maintain those additional libraries we are going to use an a scaffolding template okay so this is a scaffolding template and so we have to maintain all the dependencies in the controller to make use of other other ui libraries so if you want to make use of other ui libraries maybe we can in the bootstrap i can load only one ui library suppose if you want to make use of other ui libraries other dependent objects we have to maintain them in the controller level in the controller from controller uh, level we can access those uh, dependent libraries so that's an scaffolding template so so what exactly the syntax of an scaffolding template syntax okay sap dot ui dot define so you need to use sap ui define and open the parenthesis okay so first see sap ui define open the parenthesis okay so inside the parenthesis we have an a bracket symbol okay this is my bracket symbol put the comma so inside this i maintain the dependencies so what are the dependencies if you want to maintain i can maintain them in this uh, in this bracket actually then after this i use an a function function always function we have an a uh, parenthesis so inside this parenthesis i am going to use 
function always will have parenthesis with a curly brace and here i am going to use an a return so what is the return out of this control what is the return of this uh, 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 controller so what is the return object that we are going to define so let's take an example so if i want to maintain the dependencies like this okay so i have an a one more uh, library so always guys dependencies normally libraries will be like this right sap dot ui dot hmm? uh, let's take an example sap dot ui dot view so this is one library right so in the dependencies always we don't use the dot so instead of dot we use like this sap ui it's in a module if you see the sap ufi sdk there is in a module so the module name we need to use over here the module name we need to use over here so this is my one of the library otherwise i have an sap uh, ui i have an a uh, uh, message uh, box suppose if i want to trigger an a message box i have an a one more library called message box i can maintain like this the dependencies sap and guys always it's a small letters so sap ui and we have an a message uh, toast so like this we have different kind of libraries if different kind of libraries i can maintain the dependencies inside my uh, uh, arrays uh, this is the arrays inside the arrays i am going to maintain it function here i am going to implement the code so whatever the code i would like to implement that code i am going to implement inside this so this is an a scaffolding uh, syntax this is a scaffolding syntax so we need to maintain the, uh, the all the dependencies inside the scaffolding very very important very very important guys so this is the uh, scaffolding template so and also some of the notes which we are going to see so what exactly the notes and so some notes before uh, going to proceed into the xml view and the note about the scaffolding so always we write it in the controller always it's in a javascript file guys it's always it's in a javascript file and in javascript if we want to inherit any dependency object we have to use the keyword so if you want to inherit in javascript what is the keyword guys we use what is the keyword we use what is the keyword we use extend extend is the keyword which we are going to use it that's the first option and so for the controller there is an it's a small guys so in the controller ever we have an sap ui uh, core uh core and mvc mvc controller so this is a standard this is an sap standard it's an sap standard library we have an a by default for the controller this is the library guys this is the library which we are going to use standard library which we will use to create controller object so if you want to create an, a controller object there is an, a library sap ui core mvc controller library library which is an, a standard library provided by the sap to create an, a controller object suppose if you want to inherit anything inside this and we are going to use this library and if you want to maintain this so this is a library suppose if you want to maintain in the scaffolding how do you maintain to maintain this library in scaffolding template we use module name what is the module name sap slash ui slash uh, core slash uh, mvc slash uh, controller this is the module name we are going to use it 
so how do you know how how do i know actually okay because i am also like you so how do you know all this so if you want to just everything is an sap ui5 sdk so go to the sap ui5 sdk go to the api reference put the sap dot ui Uh, dot core dot uh, mbc did you see mbc here okay we'll type mbc see mbc controller see guys double click on this and you can see this is an sap ui5 controller uh, this is the library and so here you can see uh, the uh, constructor and so you can see there is an a by id you can get, get something and uh, so get view suppose if you want to get an a view we can use the get view uh, there are methods see on after rendering on before rendering and on exit on in it these are all the methods of this object methods of this object see and also i have an a module for this as well guys so why it's not showing up here maybe if it is not guys if it is not here where do you check it guys if the module is not here where do you where do we check it maybe um, a controller extension see so, so the, mo the module name is available over here right the module name is available here sap ui core mvc controller extension maybe i will go back controller so if something is not here where do we check it guys if something some property which i don't want i don't see here in this class methods, so where you methods. can uh, no 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 suppose if something is you are not able to see something and where do we where we are going to check it guys this what is this this is inherited from this class right so maybe i go to this class the parent class you can see the parent class also you can see it the module you can see over here guys okay like this so the parent class suppose if something is not happening something is not available in the same class we need to go at the parent class you need to check the parent class case so so for this guys some of the notes i am going to give more uh, details so some of the uh, important points which we need to consider whenever we build an ui5 and query guys so the next point is so what we need to do is whenever whenever we have a property suppose there is an a property of an a of the ui control so there there are a lot of properties for every each and every controls so sap so sap has given two methods guys two methods to set the to set the values and get the values suppose let's take an example i have an a, a input suppose if you want to set the value to the input there is an a method if you want to read the value from the input there is an a method method so that methods we call it's an a setter and get, getter methods setter and getter methods so we call it say two methods to set the values to get the values let's take an example so we have a property called uh, suppose there is a color guys i need to apply some color okay i need to apply in a color for the push button okay so if you want to apply in a color so we have a method set color so this is a method sap has given this kind of things uh, uh, inbuilt method set color to set the color and suppose i have applied a color to get the color what is the color i have applied to get the color we have a method called uh, get color okay this is an example let's take an example i have an a visible property so you know right we will do uh, visible and invisible the fields in the selection screen by using 
at selection screen output loop at the screen and invisible and visible so there are some properties the same way i have a button i need to visible i need to invisible see guys exactly we did the same kind of code in the yesterday's class so yesterday's class if you see so what we did see there is an a set visible method see set visible method so false and true so like this we have an a different methods the default method setter and getter methods for every property there is an a setter and getter methods case so like this we have an a set visible uh, and uh, get visible like this for each and every property we have an a set visible and get visible uh, methods case and also the second point is so by default we have uh, this pointer we use this yesterday i have used somewhere this pointer okay this pointer will hold the object of the object of the ui control okay by default it will be an object of the ui control suppose if you want to hold the controller object suppose if you want to hold the controller object for the this pointer we have to use explicit handling of controller object so we have to explicitly we need to handle the controller object so this is a little bit high dose i will explain later okay so whenever the uh, whenever the uh, things comes that time i am going to use this uh, button and suppose if you want to to get the runtime instance of the ui application we use class sap dot ui dot get core this is the class which we are going to use it guys so let's take an example i would like to get the view what is the current view suppose to get the current view object suppose so we used like this sap dot ui dot get core get core this is an a function and so we use an a method called get view method get view so this will give me the what is the current view of the running instance so like this we are going to use it and also we have um, uh, one more point we need to remember is suppose whenever we do not find we do not find any ui control or property in the current class what we need to do guys we have to go to the parent class and look for the required property suppose i i need to apply some method the method is not available in the current class current library so you need to go to the parent library you need to look for the parent library is there any proper or required property or method or event is available okay so that's uh, some of the points which we need to uh, use okay so next thing is i would like to go with the already you know right what exactly the associations and all maybe you see there are some associations and aggregations okay 
So what exactly the association guys? Same concept here also applicable. Even in UI we have an aso. Why? Because this is an object oriented, um, uh, object oriented concept association. So what exactly the association? Here in this, in the SAP UI5 SDKs, normally it's an a, it is an a relation between. If you talk in the uh, SAP UI point of view, it is a, a relation between two classes. Okay, that's it. So it provides a relationship between the two classes, case. Okay, so there are two types of associations. One is the composite association, and another one is the um, uh, aggregation. We have an aggregation. So composite association means so we, we, it, it must have a relationship. So must have relationship guys. Okay. So must have means both object objects coexist. Both objects coexist. That's a composite association. So what exactly this? Maybe what I can give the example is. So I have an a. Uh, I have an a. Let's take an example of. Um, uh, I have an a. Uh, maybe I can take the aeroplane because this is a good example. So aeroplane. So every aeroplane will have an a engine. Let's take. We have an a engine. And also. Uh, we have the uh, maybe I have passengers. So these are the different dependent objects actually. Uh, we have an a freight. Freight means goods. Okay. So will aeroplane will fly without a engine? Will aeroplane fly without a engine? Will aeroplane will fly without a engine? Will aeroplane fly without a engine? Uh, no, not not possible. That means it must have an, a relationship. Both objects should coexist, guys. So one aeroplane can have multiple engines. Yeah, that's right. But at least there should be a one engine. Without one engine, it doesn't fly. The aeroplane doesn't fly. So the must, it's in a must relationship. It's in a must relationship. That association we call it in a composite association. And if you take the same example, is the aeroplane will fly without a passenger? Will aeroplane will fly without a passenger? Will aeroplane will fly without a passenger? Yes, it's possible. It's possible without a passenger aeroplane will fly not required passenger is not required. So this association we call it an aggregation. So the relationship can have or cannot have that's not a problem. So both objects I can say both objects can function individually or independently both can operate independently the passengers can go by car can go by bus or can go by a ship okay it's possible it's possible so so the relation can be an optional so independently they can operate it so this kind of relationship we call it an aggregation uh, uh, relation um, aggregation association so in the same way here also we have the SDK you can see the aggregations. Let's say uh, core UIC uh, core. Uh, no. So go to the some of the other library. SAP uh, M dot button. M dot button. See we have constructor which is in a default class properties is nothing but attribute and aggregations the associations and 
uh, events and methods so aggregation means it's an a this must this can operate independently and associations you have an a associations labeled by and all so there is some associations and aggregations which are also available in the sap ui5 sdk guys so this is the uh, what exactly the association and let's go and design one of the so this is enough guys so maybe we'll go to the practical and we'll talk about the xml views what exactly the xml views and so how do you uh, define the xml views and so that we are going to discuss now but before going to uh, go to the X, uh, xml views and so there are some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, things which we need to know talk about so what exactly the xml views and why the why we will use xml views than the javascript view so in the javascript view what is the advantages of an xml view first okay so the advantages of an xml view is so actually to generate any ui control we are writing a lot of code guys so if you go and see here so if you want to define any control so we have to write in a code so go to the view in the view you can see so you are writing some code see this is the code which we are generating for id button or the text click here okay there is an, a lot of uh, a code which we need to design so the rendering of the rendering is a little it, it takes more time okay so and also we need to write a lot of logic the first disadvantage is to generate ui we must write a lot of code so so why we need to when we use js view we have to write the javascript logic to define ui control on the view second one is uh, rendering will take more time to generate equivalent html CSS and JavaScript code. Okay, this is also one of the disadvantage. And parsing. What exactly the parsing, guys? Parsing means so it will parse the UI code, converting the XML to so parsing means converting xml to the to the sorry converting javascript code to html css this takes more time parsing takes more time so that's why we don't prefer to use the javascript views instead of that we use an xml views case so xml views are very flexible to design the sap ui5 views so what exactly the xml and you know already right what exactly the xml can anybody tell what is xml what is xml what is xml what is xml guys xml stands for Hmm? extensible markup language okay we don't do much but so we are going to have predefined something that we are going to use and so this is a problem uh, so guys so xml is an extensible markup language and you know right so there are different technologies in the software industry if you want to integrate from one technology to the another technology so there is any challenges so you need let's take an example we have in above the internal tables we, we have the data in internal tables in javascript we have the data in json 
suppose if you want to convert your internal table data into uh, json format that data from json format into internal table format so so this is an, a challenge and so the xml which is an a unified uh, a unified markup language which will convert your data from different formats into the uh, it will it will parse the data it will render the data into the different formats so that's the xml so this is an, a one of the medium to convert your uh, different technologies different objects data into the uh, uh, into the target um, objects data so xml and json is the more popular things so with the xml and json we can uh, we can uh, we can render and parse the data from the different technologies so here also sap has taken a xml as an a view so they have used an xml format to design the views on the sap ui5 so what exactly the views and what kind of what kind of things we will use in the xml we are going to see now so whenever we use xmls so just make note two or three points so when we create an xml views when we create xml views we have to define with a with a namespace so there is a namespace case like html tags we have some kind of namespace right html uh, angular brackets html and all so here also we use an, some namespace so the namespace is xml ns so this is the namespace namespace we will use okay in front of any library suppose if you want to use any library we use an xml ns and we use an a column so like this we use an a column and we put an a library we put an a library here colon uh, maybe xm namespace enter so xmlns suppose i would like to design some layout suppose i need to use in a form let's take an example so which is equal to i am going to design uh, sap dot ui dot layout dot form so this is a library which i am going to use so you need to use an a prefix of xml ns and you need to give an a name for that so you can use that library inside your xml views so this is what one thing we can uh, we need to remember and the second thing is and so when we uh, when we use xml views if if we don't provide any namespace it is going to pick the ui controls from bootstrap page suppose if you don't maintain any xml ns namespace then you applied some control so it is going to take from the bootstrap library so whatever we maintain the library from the bootstrap that bootstrap library it is going to take it guys so this is the xml view and maybe i am going to design one simple xml view with a simple form guys okay with a simple form and maybe i first refer i go and check the sap ui5 sdk sap dot m dot uh, sap dot uh, ui dot what is the library sap dot ui dot uh, layout layout dot form do we have yeah layout dot form so in this we have an a simple form guys did you see any simple form yeah so this is the simple form okay this is one of the library guys so in the simple form we have different kind of properties so there is an a property different properties which we have so this column length see editable one of the property which we are going to use and also uh, 
content i think the content is the association or aggregation yeah you can see there is an a content see content is an association see zero is to n relationship that means so we can provide this or we cannot provide this that's not a problem the relation should be an optional but you can see there is an ui core element so for this association this is the library go to this library in this library there are different kind of uh, properties which which we can see so you can see there is an a layout data we have and also we have tooltip data different kind of data which we have and also you can apply the uh, different kind of ui controls as well so that will that will come from the aggregations so there are there are there are a lot of different aggregations which we have actually okay maybe we'll go and implement the xml view then we'll come to know so and also we have an, a graphical editor as well to design the views like our module pool program we have an a graphical editors the same way in the xml views we have an a graphical editors so go and create one project so create a new project new folder and edg uh, mvc and uh, xml and may 02 this is my second mvc project and expand okay and i'm going to create an a view guys so go and create a view so guys i am not able to see the view i am not able to see the sap view i am not able to see the sap view what i need to do i am not able to see the sap view i am not able to create an sap go view yeah exactly go to the project and project settings and select a project as an sap fury project and save it save it okay it has been saved and close this and now i can go create see sap ui5 view and see guys there are different kind of views html view javascript view json view and xml view the last class we created a javascript view now i am going to create an xml view and namespace is an edg very important and view name is an a maybe i can take uh, okay this is my employee view guys so i am going to create an employee view i am providing an employee view maybe i can put e as an a caps okay and next and finish see guys so maybe i will close the existing ones so it will be problem otherwise and see guys whenever you create an a view it creates an a controller by default see it creates an a controller by default see employee.controller.js javascript file it is and view is an a employee.view.xml and double click on view wow you can see guys so it is given a default library see mvc and view and you can see xml and a score sap ui5 core so it builds an inbuilt libraries maybe i will put an enter so to make more uh, readable put enter and put enter and also you can see the controller name it also taken in a controller name so controller name is see guys namespace edg dot controller dot employee see you can see here so it comes it is a controller and controller name so this is the namespace case so controller names you can see over here and it is going to give a if you want to access anything in sap ui it uses a namespace controller name is it is a controller and employee and also it loads the default library from the bootstrap so which is an xml and sap.m and also it defines other libraries core library and as well as the mvc library as well and suppose if you want to define your own libraries yes you can define you can add your own libraries by using the prefix xml and s colon and put some name 
whatever the name you can put you can put it here it's your own choice it's a fancy name then you must define your uh, library what library you need to use it so that's what we need to do and let's check maybe i will come to this part later first i will go and create the uh, in index.html so go and create index.html and create in a file create in a file index dot html and okay so everybody familiar I, I by this time so which is in a doc type and html enter and html and uh, header and we have an a body we have an a body body right in header bootstrap write the functionality for the boots bootstrap so here i need to use id which is equal to sap dot ui what is this here sap dot ui dot i for, I, for, I forgot here sap dot ui dot bootstrap yep. not uh, 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 not uh, dot it's an a iphone sap ui iphone uh, boot strap right then src which is equal to https and uh, uh, https sap uh, ui ww is required here not required right sap uh, ui fi dot hana dot on demand dot com and resources and sap iphone ui iphone core dot js case it's in a javascript file so this is what which we need to maintain and also you need to load the library and themes at data sap dot ui dot theme theme or themes theme i think and maybe sap underscore belize this is the theme which we are going to use this is an a uh, one of the theme and which is an, a popular theme sap uses this theme only and also i will use libraries load the library so the default library which we are going to load is sap.m library sap.m library so this is the thing which i need to maintain and also guys if you want to whenever you create a view we are providing in a namespace even you need to mention you need to put an identifier for the namespace so to provide that we have an a data data why i am writing all these guys i can do the copy paste but if you do the copy paste you will forget that's why every time i'm see i have written many times even i'm forgetting every day so always try to write manually sap dot data ui and resource uh, roots okay so if you write many times you are going to remember these things and guys so whenever we do the resource root just use an a single code inside that use an a curly brace so which is nothing but it's in a binding concept actually so i'm going to bind the namespace edg is my namespace you can put whatever it is guys i am following edg as in a namespace and also you need to use dot slash to indicate an a root folder okay this is what which we need to do it and after this and also i am going to create an object for the view so if you want to create an object for the view write an a script and in the script and script i create an a var var wo it's an a xml view i can say xml uh, xml view which is equal to uh, new sap dot ui dot view and use the uh, use the parenthesis and put here and inside this i am going to 
curly brace so inside this i am going to write my properties what is the properties of your view so which is an id which is equal sorry so id which is an uh, id uh, xml so this is my uh, view id and also we need to provide view name what is the name of the view and guys tell me what is the name of the view now can anybody tell what is the name of the view can anybody tell how can i access the view how can i access the view how can i access the view EDG. how can i uh, yeah so this is my root folder so root folder means it's an edg exactly then tell me okay it is next you have to come to view from the view expand the view maybe expand the view okay then expand the view and go to the employee so this is the path guys this is the path so instead of root folder don't mention the folder name so we have given a namespace that which is an edg dot view dot employee so don't put this this is an extension view it indicates we put an a view name as an employee so the same thing which i am going to define over here so edg dot view dot employee E caps E M P L O Y E E. That's it, guys. That's it. So this is my view name, and also I need to provide what is the type of the view. So type of the view, guys. This is also we can get it from the we can we we have in some kind of constants as well, guys. So don't write in a hard coding. So if you want to find a constants, go to the SAP UI Five SDK so uh, okay so i need to what happened hmm. all made guys um I need to set my adapter. So, yeah. So I will go to the SAP dot. There is a library. Maybe I can go to that library. So what is that core core library? If you can see MVC uh, view double can this. See SAP UI core dot MVC. I'll go to the SAP UI dot core dot MVC MVC and you can see there is an a JSON view JavaScript to you and XML view also there view type go to view type guys go to view type and you can see guys so the view type can be an a you can use this the, these are all the fields means it's a constants so html view you can use this constant javascript view you can use this constant and xml view i can use this constant guys so take this constant copy and so come here and go to the index.html so instead of writing r coding i can use this case so sap ui.core.mvc.view type which is an xml view guys so then okay i created an a view object okay what is the next step guys what is the next step what i can do what is the next step i can do so wo xml view and you can use an a method guys what is that method i need to place this at my body of the html so i am going to declare in a body in the body i have an a div tag so declare in a div tag div 
okay for that div i am going to provide in a class this is the standard so class is sap uh, ui uh, body so you should you must be caps sap ui body and inside this i am going to have one more div tag one more div tag my id of the div tag which is equal to the okay id xml xml uh, body so this is my xml view body id xml view uh, xml body this is the id and inside this i am going to place this maybe a div okay and this so place this place this view this is my view object place this view object in the body of the html so if you want to put for every html tag we have an, a unique identification id and place this so place this view in this id xml body guys maybe i need to use uh, double quotes so this is the this is the code which we need to write it so it will place the your xml view on the body of the html body of the html but what is the content of your xml view did you design the content of your xml view no so here you can see so there is a name suppose if you want to define anything and if you want to design any ui control you need to design the ui controls in the xml view so how you can design the xml view and how we can design is so maybe i can go to the one of the uh, one of the uh, forms maybe i'm going to declare my own form guys maybe i can declare my own form first so xml ns so which is uh, maybe i can put my uh, namespace so if you want to define any your own library you need to define like this as xml ns and you can put your own library maybe whatever it is you, you are, it's a fancy name guys maybe i am going to use my uh, kid name okay which is an ashanvi okay i can put whatever the name it's a namespace that's it okay so i am going to use this and load the library which is an sap ui layout form so i am going to use sap ui dot layout layout dot form so this is my library i am going to design a simple layout which is an a layout to form and also we have a some kind of containers in sap so leave it app and everything so here title you need to provide an a page title what is your page title maybe i can say first i am going to design employee master data so this is my title of my uh, web page and we have an a content so content is an aggregation for this we have seen right so for this the content is an aggregation suppose if you want to if you want to design any ui controls you must design inside the content you must design inside the content of your um, content of your things guys so maybe what i am going to do is so inside the content maybe i can take it out the content so this content i am going to refer it from the sap layout guys not from here i am going to take this from the uh, uh from the sap layout form this content i am going to take it from sap layout form but if i want to use the content from the sap layout form so we need to use the library we need to use the library shanvi as an a prefix so because i have given a name to that library so shanvi so i will put here as an a simple form so i am going to use simple simple form that's it see so sanvi so this is a namespace my library there i am going to utilize the simple form uh, our object inside the simple form object i have an a content i have an a content okay i use an a content so use the content so inside the content 
inside the content you can design your own label size you, you, you can design your own content so let's take an example we have an a content called okay uh, label i'm going to design an a, a label so put the label so guys so here you can see always there is an a uh, uh, open tag and also we have an a end tag so no need guys if you want to end your tag so here itself i can mention so like this label if i use slash it, it becomes an a open as well as end guys so both it will work so this is my label tag so for every label tag we have an a text okay the text which is equal to maybe my text name equal to okay employee number this is my text i am designing one label employee number okay and also i have one more field called input one by one we'll do input okay input i can design maybe for the input uh, uh, we have um, for the input we have kind of uh, we can assign the values as well for the input value uh, for the input is maybe i am hard coding some value guys 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this is my value for my input just i have designed simple uh, one label and one input okay one label and one input so this is my content guys so one one label one input field i have designed actually in my xml view okay so maybe save it save all okay so that's it maybe we'll test this first okay we'll test this application first okay whether it is working or not we'll see okay go to the xml view and uh, run the xml view as a web application and and huh? something is going wrong console mm, unexpected identifier unexpected identifier index.html okay so what is the problem guys yesterday also we got this same error i think sir uh, the code should be between the script of open open script and end script right in index.html yeah yeah so script uh Okay, first one is fine. Huh? After uh, after opening the script, uh, you wrote the code, right? ID, source, and all that. Correct. correct. Is it required to write between? Ah, uh, it should be like this only, right? So script, ID, Bootstrap, SRC, same thing we are writing, right? Mm. I hope. What is the problem? Maybe, uh, maybe I need to write script ID SAP UI Bootstrap and SRC HTTP S colon slash slash SAP UI file dot hana dot on demand dot com resources SAP UI code dot JS data SAP UI theme SAP underscore belies SAP data UI lips SAP dot M a data SAP UFI resource root uh, resource uh, roots and single quote EDZ colon dash 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 and okay that's fine and the script and the script var XML view new SAP UI view maybe I I think this is the problem new yeah I think this is the problem this might be new I written a capital letters might be this might be the issue guys okay 
and id id xml view name edg view employee and type sapy core mvc view type xml okay save it and go to here and refresh wow so now you can see guys a simple form with the first input guys employee master data this is the title of our uh, web page and employee number and also you can see the input for the employee number guys very good now we can design one by one guys so now slowly we'll learn one by one okay interesting and maybe i can go to the this one and next thing is I will design one more so one more field so my next field is employee name employee name and name is okay uh, Richard Kun okay this is the employee name and uh, this is my employee name I can say employee first name employee first name huh? and next one is control c maybe i can say it's an a uh, richard is my employee first name and next one is employee last name employee last name which is an a kun okay and maybe i can use uh, salary salary and salary is something just i am hard coding the value space here so salary which is an input uh, value salary equal to uh, some uh, like this one lakh and also i am going to use currency what is the currency of the salary salary and use currency currency maybe i can say it's an inr INR. INR. So just I am hard coding, but the values are not coming up. We'll see, guys, why it's not coming up. Okay, save. And I can come here and refresh the page. Wow. You can see employee number, employee first name, employee last name, salary, and currency, guys. Very good. So maybe now I am going. This is my this is my label uh, uh, UI control. This is my input uh, UI control, and and also guys, I need a submit button. I need a button control as well. So if you want to apply a button control, you can apply the button control also over here. Maybe I can put an, a button B O T T O N button. So in the button, uh, we have what are the button uh, properties which we have, guys? We have an, a text of the button. What is the text? Maybe text is click here or submit right submit button submit text submit uh, for the button always we will be having a function every button when you click on it there is an, a function so the function which which is is so what is the event what is the event which we need to handle so for the button what is the event guys for the button what is the on event click. Huh? no 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 on click, on, on click is uh, it's our name it's not uh, sap name there is an press. event press perfect so press is the event inside this you need to write your method so on press exact this is our method function this is the event handler function but this is sap event actually this is the sap event suppose if you want to see this go to the what is the event so everything is an sdk okay go to the sap dot sap dot yeah very interesting is uh, button sap dot m dot button go to the button see you can see the property so you can, you can see the see property text what is the text of your button and also what is the button type and width of the button this is okay but if, if you go to the events so there is an, a press event see find when the clicks on the control when you click on the button this press event will be triggered 
so that's that press event we are going to mention here so here i press and i am going to mention a one function on press so this function we handle in the controller because any processing logic will be done in the controller level model view we are following in a mvc architecture which is in a model view controller architecture means so this here i am designing a view this function will be handled in the controller level so this is my button guys so i have in a text to submit and i have in a uh, uh, one function and also i am going to end this over here i am going to end this over here guys so this is my button which i am going to handle over here okay so save it and refresh your output and refresh your output wow a submit button is enabled guys now you can see there is an a submit button there is an a submit button and suppose if you want to uh, enable uh, highlight with a color also we can do that so there is also one more uh, uh, properties and you can see there is an a emphasize do you see any emphasize guys so it's not there emphasize text text direction i can test uh, text direction uh, also we can text direction inherit social element text direction, okay so there is an a uh, uh, icon guys you can add the icon as well so let's take if you want to enable an icon so take it control c and so there is an a button you can you can you can give the icon to your submit button which is equal to guys how can you enable an icon did you remember what is the icon prefix sap dot icon and colon we need to use the icon name so suppose i am going to do an accept icon so i am going to use an accept icon so is this syntax is correct or else we'll go to the again we'll go to the i forgot the syntax maybe so icon uh, if you want to go to the icon tools and go to the um, uh, where is that icon explorer sap hmm? icons Uh, sorry guys i need to use slash slash see sap uh, iphone icon colon slash slash accept okay i missed out the slash slash so i missed out slash slash this is the thing which we need to use it guys so this is my icon and save it and come here and come here and refresh so the icon is not coming up uh, refresh why it's not coming up okay save uh, okay it's not i doc guys sorry i write an i doc okay it's an a not i doc it's an a icon okay save save and do the refresh wow you can see there is an a icon as well and also suppose this submit button is not that much great the visibility the look and feel is not good and if i want to provide any color to that so i can do the colors as well guys so maybe i can go here close so i can provide any colors as well so how you can provide that so come back come back and where is my okay so go to the api uh, reference sap dot m dot button go to the button so i didn't see any uh, type uh, colors over here so if you don't find any color highlighting things what you need to do guys if you don't find anything in this class i didn't find the color property or an emphasize property you know right in html there is an emphasize you can highlight that right so here also there is an emphasize uh, property if i don't see that maybe i can go with the parent class right that's the uh, that's the notes which i have given that's an important point go to the parent class 
in the parent class properties in the properties did you see any emphasis uh, no tool tip uh, no 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 i think i go to the more uh, topmost class and go to the constructor somewhere i can see emphasize guys so emphasize uh, so somewhere i can get it emphasize so i can enable the color as well guys so i forgot maybe you can you can do the emphasize you can highlight that thing maybe i can write like this maybe uh emphasize emphasize which is equal to uh, true okay save so i'm not sure whether it is a true or something maybe refresh it no it's not working so maybe emphasize guys so one more beauty of the uh, xml view is so now here you can see right click and so there is an a one more thing is control a and right click and open with editor that is then a one more option which i have maybe go to the here double click so open layout editor guys so one more important so just why what i am teaching is manually i am writing the code why because you should know what exactly this and so you can go to the view you can open with the there is two way, two ways we can design the layouts one is code editor another one is the layout editor so this is an a code editor i have open you can go with the layout editor so you can drag and drop the controls case ui controls as well so because i am i am teaching in a, a difficult way but this is in a very easy way so now you can see there is an a layout editor also see guys employee number employee first name employee last name and everything it is there you see a currency and also this uh, see this is an a button now double click on the button there is an a properties you can you can enable the properties over here so maybe i can go here uh, enable the true sap i can accept uh, i can first text direction type visible true width tool tip okay so that is not there guys coloring is not there here so maybe uh, i will uh, i will explain later that i will check it and later but but i have one more uh, thing so maybe this is my label employee first name so now you can see first name uh, employee first name is text and block busy so here you can enable the things uh, indicator size uh, field required text direction vertical align so you can give the percentage also so let's take an example so here are the output you can see so here output um, and so it is giving some percentages right so maybe what i can say uh, if i if you want to reduce this input let's take an example i don't want this much length for this field input field how you can do that i need to reduce this length of the input how you can do that so that kind of things also we can provide it so maybe you can go here you can put in a percentage so the percentage somewhere it is here there uh, width uh, i think width maybe i can give only 50 percentage okay so 50 uh, uh, maybe 50 pixels is the width okay save it so maybe okay it's, i i don't want uh, this to be a 50 percentage for the input i will provide an a width not the text so take it out the width and go to the double click on the input field and pro provide the provide the width of this and uh, filled with 50 percentage maybe i can provide in a 30 percentage okay filled with only the 30 percentage and uh, text okay so a width also here i can provide uh, 50 percentage okay i i given only see it is reduced now guys 50 percent only it is 
now maybe this is also i provide 50 percentage and i go here Fifty percentage, enter. Hmm. Yeah, everything I make fifty percentage. I don't want hundred uh, percent, and also fifty uh, percentage, enter. And also, this also provide a fifty percent currency, also fifty percentage. See guys, when I change the property here, when I go to the code editor, it will generate a code guys, see? And maybe I can I can close this, save, first save the data. I saved it and close it. And you can see guys, the width property has been added in the code level. Before it is there, I didn't add any width property. So it is added from the, uh, from the graphical editor so you can do in both ways you can write the code or else you can enable the properties in the graphical screen editor so automatically it is going to give the uh, code for you guys so that is a, one of the beauty of the html and now you can refresh now you can see uh, only the employee number is 100 percent remaining things are a 50 percentage only and maybe i can take it out the employee number to the 50 and also guys did you see so what is the uh, problem here guys what is the problem here what is the problem here did you anybody values are not getting values are not getting that is one thing and see guys the text and the input is not aligned right so the text is in the top the input is somewhere here the input is somewhere here it's not looking good okay i need to make them both the uh, things in the aligned format so if i want to do that so we have an option called editable option so in the simple form level so there is an option editable which is equal to uh, which is equal to true you, you you we use this and both the things will be in a aligned format and also the employee number uh, where is the employee number input yeah so this also I am going to provide a width. I can write my code. I know how to provide the width. I can write the code. No need to go to the graphical editor. And here you can provide the width of your input. So I can provide the width of my control guys. So width 50 percentage and save. And now you come here and refresh it. And now you can see guys, everything is aligned. And currency i don't know why it's coming like this it should be like this 50 percent it should come so okay that's fine so my next thing is so how can i uh, how can i get the values over here so i'm not getting the values that's the problem so what is the property maybe input to tag so maybe i will go to the sap.m.input dot input control how you can put the values so that's what i can see maybe i can go to the uh, library sap.m.input dot input it's a button i go to the input uh, tag input uh, tag go to the input control look at the properties look at the properties so in the properties uh, did you see uh, description uh, max length selected key show suggestion so suggestion text format type what kind of type of the field it is value help so i do not have any operator uh, uh, property maybe i can go to the my parent class extends okay input base in the input base i go to the properties and here you can see enabled uh, name of the property editable uh, true uh, required suppose if you want to uh, do in a mandatory field you can put in a uh, required and uh, see guys there is an, a value for defense of value of the control so value of the control but i did an a value why it's not working i put an a value value oh guys what is the problem can anybody tell what is the problem can anybody tell so what is the problem can anybody tell what is the problem can anybody tell 
what is the problem can anybody tell what is the problem can anybody Run. tell huh? what is the problem is capital v is capital perfect guys very v very important v is in a caps here so i told you right so sap ui fact very 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 thing important so it 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 makes sense okay so it gives sap ui fi is in a case sensitive guys so here the case will be the problem case is in a problem that's why the values are not coming up so that's why the values are not coming up maybe i will change the i will change the value to the uh, yeah. small value 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 and value that's it save it now now you come back and refresh the your ui wow you yeah. can see the values are binded to the your ui element guys exactly this is what binding guys this is what binding with value operator so next okay. concept is binding just here i hard coded the values so interesting time things coming up guys here i have hard coded the values please mute yourself i don't know who is talking please mute so here the interesting th things are coming up in the xml view level i have hard coded the values but in the real time we don't hard code the values guys we don't hard code the values so what you can do is what we can do is so there is an a concept called modeling concept so you need to model the data of your ui application how you can model it and what is the binding and how you can bind the model data to the ui and what kind of data models which we have so what is json model what is xml model what is resource model and what is o data model yes guys we learn the o data model so that is a prerequisite for sap ui fi and fury we get the data this data will be in the sap system we fetch this employee data from sap we we bind that data to the ui application in the sap ui fi what a beautiful technology sap ui fi and fury which is in a stateless application so when i connect to the sap system it will connect it will fetch the data the session will be closed in the sap system it's in a stateless applications how you can design the state stateless applications by using sap ui fi and fury so the interesting th things coming up in next 10 minutes we are going to see what exactly the binding concept how what is the binding what are the types of bindings which we have what kind of models which we have that we are going to see in next 10 minutes we'll take in a uh, not 10 minutes 15 minutes break one o'clock then in the one o'clock we are going to start the binding concept at the local json model we build in a json model already you know how to build the json model because that will be very since you have you know the our data it is very easy to learn the sap ufi some people will come to the institute okay can you teach the sap ufi and fury i don't know about i don't know uh, object oriented above i don't know what data i want sap ui fi and fury how you can learn it here how you can learn it so the concept every concept if you want to understand the concept the object orientation the data everything you should know since you are familiar with sap abap with object oriented abap and o data o data you are able to understand this technology guys otherwise it's not possible so maybe you can learn it maybe people will do the business yes you can learn it but it's not a effective learning it's not a impactable learning just you will learn and you will go that's it but if you want to have an impactive learning impactive and uh, quality of the uh, learning so you should know the concepts database concepts object oriented concepts what is data what is field what is description what is label then only you can design the ui guys that's it for now after 15 minutes we talk about the binding we talk about the json model we talk about what is object we talk about what is arrays and how you can uh, uh, how you can maintain your json models and how you can bind your json models to your ui application instead of hard coding i will get the data from the json file and i will bind the data to the ui guys and you can do a lot of things guys you can do uh, uh, required field you can do uh, invisible yeah that also will do how to invisible this field 
like that also we are going to uh, do that guys so that's it for now exactly one o'clock we are going to start the course again take a break take a uh, have coffee or tea and come back so thank you all i'm going to put an a mute okay so any any charts in 17th line okay new yeah new exactly extending what up language prana yeah yeah so that's okay and This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, yes. So what we did is even uh, last time uh, this text is not aligned with the input. Now it is aligned with the input, right? So the option which we used is in the simple form level, there is an editable. So when you make editable, which is equal to true, so the text and also the input field will come in a aligned format so that's an editable option in the simple form and also guys the submit button if you can see i want the submit button under currency so it is coming after the currency i don't want to have submit button over here i will put the submit button over under the currency how i can enable that so maybe so before the button so I am going to use simple uh, one uh, label label property simple blank label I am going to use it so it will insert on a blank label and save it and come here and refresh see guys submit button comes under the currency and also i see submit button is having uh, more length maybe i don't want that much length so what i can do guys if i want to reduce that so what i can do, i can do can anybody tell we can enable width right control c and so you can put control v okay and save it and 50% i am uh, taking the length of the button and now you come here and refresh again it will reduce to the 50 percent now you can see the submit button 50 percent is also more maybe i can put uh, 20 percent of the size and also guys if you want to use sorry i i used in a different one so we need to use type type which is equal to uh, emphasized not uh, the emphasized emphasized so this is the one which you need to use it will highlight in the blue color the button will be highlighted in the blue color take a save and come here and refresh the input now 
now you can see see guys the button is highlighted in the blue color wow so this is the simple form and also guys if you want to bold suppose if i want to bold this text okay so even you can design uh, you can bold this text as well suppose if you want to bold this so maybe i need to go to the labels so go to the labels so label text and here i use an a uh, design so design is the one of the property so design which is equal to bold so put in a design as an a bold and it will bold your labels so label property and put in a all the label properties as an a bold so now i can put label property as an a bold and uh, label property as an a bold and also label property as an a bold that's it and save and now you can refresh now it's a normal text and refresh it and now you can see the text is bolded guys so if you want to apply in a bold also you can apply the bold guys so this is what the ui simple form and with a simple ui design with a single input fields okay with a single input even guys we design table controls and all later but before going to do that maybe most of the people are absent it seems uh, yeah okay so irfan uh, what time, what is your time from uh, this time um, you will be having some yeah you go to masjid right? i have to go to prayer okay no okay. in home so i only but at 1:30 130 okay i will continue till 130 yeah okay so what next is uh, okay. i see my data i have hard coded over here right so i don't want to hard code so this i am going to take from the model so how we can take it from the model what exactly that concept what is model that we are going to talk the theory part today and maybe the practical will see in the tomorrow so we hard coded the values to appear in the ui normally we don't hard code it so instead of this we design in a uh, model view controller architecture we use in a model view controller architecture so what exactly so we designed a view now right xml view and also i have an a processing logic to do the processing logic we have an a controller and also we have we need to have an a model we need to model the data let's let's take an example i have an a employee uh, number and uh, uh, So in the currently I hard coded the values in the view level, which is not a good practice. We should not hard code the values. So what exactly the uh, data models which we have, and uh, maybe uh, first name and uh, uh, last name and uh, salary, and also I need uh, currency. Okay, this is my data, guys. This is my data. So I need to bind. I need to maintain a model. So this is my model. So this is my model. This is my data model. So this is my data model. Okay. This is my data model. So what I need to do? What kind of models which we have? And what is model? And what types of models which we have? And how you can bind the data from model to the uh, view and view to the model how you can do this concept we call it in a binding how you can bind the data how you can maintain the data so that we are going to talk in few minutes so first we'll talk about what exactly the model so what exactly the model okay so it is the model is responsible to hold the data for the SAP UI5 application. So the model always talks about the data. So it is responsible to hold or to store the data for the SAP UI5 application. So we are going to store the data in the model level. Actually, this is an object of, this is a object of the object of the data in the models 
this is an object of the data in models okay so there are there are different kind of models which we have what kind of models which we have is so we have models sorry we have if you have a model so there are different types of models which we have Uh, we have client side models okay we have server side models server side models just guys just think about think about abap okay so in abap so we have an a database we have an a we have an a application layer right so the data permanently stored in the database layer if you want to do some kind of manipulations we use an a data models in abap what are all those if you want to do some manipulation language temporary we store the data uh, temporarily we can store the data we can use them for the manipulations and in every program we use them what are all those data models case what are all those data models in abap in abap what are all those data models guys variables work areas and internal tables here also in sap ui also we have data models we have an a json model okay which is which is we use frequently in in other programs we use frequently them in sap ui also we use frequently the json model and xml model and resource model okay normally i can say it's in a temporary data models but server side so we have any data in the server side so if you want to the data is stored permanently in the database and if you want to fetch that data from server to the sap ui we use a data model called o data model guys so this is what exactly we learn in the uh, in the our course the o data how you can fetch the data from sap or how you can post the data to the sap so the models can be in a server client side model that means this data will be stored in the browser level in the browser level we store it in a temporarily we don't normally we don't use to store permanently why because so ui uh, browser application is in a very lightweight application we should not store any data in the browser level okay which will be in a performance uh, uh, performance uh, uh, implication so to avoid that we are going to use the we are going to store the data in the server level and whenever as and when required we trigger the o data service we trigger the service to the back end and we fetch the data from the back end so that we are going to use with the server side models which is an o data model guys so this is my model so now how you can create the models and what are the steps to create an a model and that we are going to see now so what exactly the client side model what exactly the server side model then we'll talk about the first type of model json model then we'll take you to the uh, xml and resource model also okay but o data model also we are going to integrate our sap ui5 applications with the uh, o data model guys client side model first we talk about what exactly client side models so which is a name model okay which is which which will be responsible to store the uh, data in browser level browser level browser level and which are 
mainly used for the data manipulations in UI level. It's like variables, work area and internal table in above guys. If you compare, it's like an, uh, variables, work areas and internal tables in the above. That's the client side models which we are going to use the purpose which we are going to use and also we have server side model server side models are mainly used so in this model all the data will be stored in the server all the data is stored in the server and as on when required we connect to the server and use the vodata technique to fetch the data from server side so that's a server side model so always the best case is Always we use an a server side models in the SAP UIFI applications to fetch the permanent data But to do any manipulations to do internal uh, uh, Processing of your data. We use in a client side models Okay, that's the use of the client side models and server side models in the client side models We have JSON model XML model and resource model the server side. We have an a data model guys so these are different techniques different models which we have and so also whenever we use these models here guys binding so what exactly the binding actually what exactly the binding so when i i have the data in my model how you can bind the data from view to the model and so what kind of binding techniques which we have and what is binding first can anybody tell guys in workflow we have used binding concept okay so by using this term what exactly the binding sending the data from one container to another container. Ah, okay that is an example that's perfect answer in the workflow point of view okay binding will differ from one uh, one concept to another concept so exactly the data will be there in one container different containers if you want to transfer the data from one container to the another container we use binding here the binding means here we talk about here the container is model guys see the container is model the visibility is in a view the user is going to see in the view right the data and the data is is in the model level so this is an a binding is an a binding is the process of connecting the data from model to the view that's the answer in the ui point of view okay process of connecting the data connecting or transferring both are same guys both are same processing connecting or transferring the data from model to the view okay there are three types there are different types of bindings there are four types of bindings which we have four types of binding in sap ui okay so that's term you need to remember guys okay p e e a okay you always remember this you always do because i give in a, a different kind of uh, remembering things why because i always forgot how many types of bindings okay p e e a p means it's in a property binding and we have in a one more e which is an a expression binding and we have an a one more e which is equal to expression binding element binding okay so element binding we have an a one more binding which is an aggregation binding aggregation binding these are all the four types of bindings which we have we'll talk one by one so first we'll talk about the uh, one of the binding that i will talk before going to the binding so maybe the binding what is the answer guys if I ask the question, what is the binding? So binding is in a process of connecting the data from 
model to the view that is in a binding don't tell by what is binding don't tell the types of bindings huh? so it's in a process of connecting the data from model to the view that we call it's in a binding and when i ask what are the types of binding you have to say okay one is the property binding another one is the you need to remember this word and one is another one is expression binding and element binding and aggregation binding okay so before going going to build in a binding maybe i i need to prepare in a json file first okay maybe i have an employee number first name last name salary and currency for this i am going to design one um, one uh, json file if you want to design a json file guys what is the site which is a flexible site you do do you remember in in more data we learn one site what is that site if you want to validate the json data 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 json.lint.com okay everybody everybody forgot jsonlint.com this is the one of the site and where i can build my own json so if i want to build my own json so maybe i will open my curly brace and close the curly brace inside the curly brace i am going to have my employee and employee structure and employee structure and which is uh, a colon which is equal to this is my employee structure in this structure i need in a fields okay first one is employee uh, maybe i don't use like this employee number right which is equal to and use double quotes both sides fields employee number and employee number which is equal to maybe i put 1000 okay this is my one field and i have uh, one more field uh, first uh, name okay and which is equal to okay maybe uh, john john okay then next name uh last name which is equal to maybe john uh, uh, richard okay this is another name maybe i have uh, salary salary and which is uh, equal to maybe you can use uh, salary as uh, okay ten uh, hundred thousand 10,000 on lakh and also we have uh, currency C U R R E N C Y currency and which is equal to maybe I can say it's an A I N R so this is my guys is it single record or is it multiple record is it single record or is it multiple record is it an array or is it an object Guys, we discussed in the JavaScript also this. Is it in a single record or is it in an array? Is it in a single record object or is it in an array? Is it in a single record object? Is it in a array? Huh? It's not array. array. Array array means you need to use bracket, guys. You have to use the bracket, then only it becomes an array. It's in a single record object. Well did JSON. And maybe what is the error? Maybe I should not. I, I don't want this. So now you can do the validate JSON. And what is the problem? Maybe I need to put uh, double quote here and double quote here. Maybe validate JSON. Why? What is the problem, guys? So error parsing the line. Employee structure. This, this, this. Employee number. Expecting U O F got. So what is the problem, guys? So employee str and colon. I have this. So what is the problem? Can anybody tell? What is the problem? I have an employee structure. So maybe I will take out out this. Take it out this. Well, that Jason, no. Did you remember what is the problem? We used yeah, colon. Huh? Where is the colon missing? Semicolon at the last. Semicolon at the last. I don't think 
related json no here it's giving me a problem guys maybe i can put uh, okay like this employee structure uh added json so this should be the total should be here no, i put this this is the one and here i am going to put this employee structure valid json and what happened okay in the last it is perfect yes now you can see valid json wow so this is my employee structure this is my json format guys i, I will keep it aside this okay so i will keep it aside this but if you want to build any model guys model is an object you need to create an object for this i will pump in this data i will create an object for the models okay there are different steps which we need to follow okay so what are the uh, steps to create an a model so there are some steps guys so you need to follow the steps then only you can create an a model so model is an a object that's what we talked about right so what exactly model is an a object so steps you need to follow some of the steps guys. steps to create model okay it's an a coding guys it's not that much easy so it's an a coding only everything is coding in the javascript in the ui5 okay so you need to write the steps you need to first create the model object create the model object object means always you will be having a class guys always so let's take an example i have an a var wo model which is equal to i will use a new so there is an a every class there is an a every model there is an a class case sap dot ui dot uh, model dot and which is an a json model i use an a json model dot which is an a json and a model and so this is the object first which you need to create this is my model first first step is you need to create the object model okay the next second step is after this you need to set the model set the model or set the data set the data to the model set the data to the model object so we created the model object here right and after this we need to set the data to the model object so what are the data we have that we need to set it so maybe i have an a model object model and dot we have a method called set data and open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis so inside this guys just pump in your data so whatever the data we prepared right so we need to pump in the data we need to pump in the data so how can you pump in guys inside this maybe i can pass the data whatever i prepared now just go to here and this is my data guys i pump in this data to the model so i pump in this data to the model see so this is my code so first i created an object model is an object so model is an object i created in a model object so i set the data to the model so set by using method there is a method called always guys there is a setter method and getter method so if you want to set the data you need to use an a set data method suppose if you want to get the data you need to use an a get data method always sap ui5 for anything there is an a two methods one is setter method another one is getter method so we have to use the setter method set data method and pump in the data so the data will be stored in the object of the model so then then and now the third step is the third step is so we need to so see guys in above also there are local data and global data if you define data declaration at the program top declaration it becomes in a global internal table and when you declare an internal table inside a form and form inside a function module inside a method and method it becomes in a local declaration local internal table the local internal table can be accessible locally inside the block but the global data declaration we can we can we can access across your program so that's the difference here also we need to set this data model at the globally in the application level guys so set the 
data in the application level or if you want to set in the view level also you can set in the view level or if you want to set the data in the ui control level also we can set it but my always my suggestion is set the data globally in the application level so that you can access across suppose if i have two views in my uh, application i can access my data in the two views as well just now i have an only one view so if you want to get anything runtime instance of your application there is in a class called sap.ui.getcore get core and there is an a uh, set model data set model data so in this set model data i pass my model i'm i pass my model object so it will set the data in my model in my application level then fourth step is bind the data from model object to the ui properties or ui input fields bind the data to the ui input fields so how you can bind the data guys how you can bind the data so to bind the data in in ui to bind the data data in ui okay we use curly symbol guys curly brackets okay so let's take an example i have an a single variable okay let's take an example var uh, uh, lv underscore mat nr okay so this is my single value i can directly bind this data like this lv underscore mat nr okay let's take an example i have an a data like like this var work area okay let's say which is in a type of just i am giving example guys we back i have some fields in this we don't declare like this just i am giving example okay suppose if you want to bind the data so to bind the work area data we use like this okay work area fields so use the curly brace here my first one is i need to use an a slash case here also sorry i need to use an a slash slash work area slash I have an a field called vbeln so this is my field i need to bind this so in this case can tell me can anybody tell me if i want to bind the data for the employee number what i need to do what i need to do if i want to bind the data okay employee number first what i need to do first i i will do in a slash so employee employee yes s t r so maybe i will use curly brace and slash my employee number so this is the work area guys this is the work area i will talk the arrays later first i am running of the time so this is the way we are going to bind the data guys so this is the way we are going to bind the data so now i am going to uh, uh, first create the object and set the data to the object then we will 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 we'll set the data in the global application layer level then we are going to bind the data in the ui level so that's what we are going to see in few minutes so go to the application and go to the application go to the guys guys go to the controller if you are to write if you want to write any logic go to the controller so control shift 1 and go to the controller now i am going to use guys on init method now in the controller level there are different methods on init it's which it works like an a constructor of the controller guys so what exactly the constructor when it will be executed as soon as the a object created controller object created that time the on init method will be triggered automatically the on init method will be triggered automatically so here i am going to write in a logic okay for the in the on init method so the first step is what i need to write in the first step first create create the model object so create the model object var wo model which is equal to uh, new sap dot ui dot uh, model uh, dot json model uh, dot uh, 
uh, what is that here i forgot json model and maybe you can see json json model so the caps json uh, model so this is what which we need to do and maybe this m might be the caps and so use the this okay this is my first step i created an a model object and my second step is second set is inject the json data inject the json data to the model object okay so how can you set the model o model dot set data and open the parenthesis just inside the parenthesis so inside the parenthesis just pump in your data which we have prepared so go to here and we have an adjacent link.com somewhere so somewhere there is an adjacent link.com yeah so take this data and pump in the data control c and where is that here uh, control c and control v so pump in the data guys i pump in the data in the uh, in the model level i stored the data in the model level then uh, that's it maybe uh, close this yes it is done so after this and guys if you confuse so here it will group the data it will block the data so i put this like this then next my third step is step three is set the model object and data in application level that means the controller level we need to set the data guys so if you want to set this maybe what i need to do so i have any method so sap dot ui dot get core get core and we have an a set model so in this set model just pump in the o model just pump in the o model just pump in the o model that's it so i set the data in the application level in the model i set the model in the application level that means i can access this data across my ui application now i go to the employee uh, view here i am going to bind the data guys so instead of hard coding see here i have hard coded here i have hard coded instead of this instead of my hard coded value so if you want to bind the data open a uh, open a curly brace and use slash and employee str and slash and employee number sorry employee number first i am going to see guys the first result whether it is working or not one field i binded one value i have binded so i saved it now come to the application here i should get an a value of 1000 guys what value i should get it what value i should get it 1000 i should get it why because in my uh, controller i pumped in the data here so my data is employee number which is equal to 1000 so when i get the 1000 in here then only it is working fine my data is coming from my model so refresh it yeah i think there is an error inspect inspecting is debugging here we need to debug what is the error maybe uh, i think the problem is with the setting of the set model and maybe json model of undefined cannot read property json model of undefined okay employee controller it is giving me the error so json uh, model sap dot ui dot model json model dot json model so it is creating the model object it is giving me the creation of model object maybe guys we'll go to the sdk uh, we'll see whether it is in a correct class or not okay sap dot sap uh, dot ui
dot model uh, and maybe i can see uh, we have odata model i don't want odata model i want an a json model guys so see uh, json see json model see sap dot ui uh, dot sorry uh, json model client model this is sap ui model json see guys sap ui model json ah guys guys so i got the point now so what we need to do is if you want to use this guys i need to because my application is dependent on the json model so if you want to maintain the dependencies what i need to use it if i want to maintain the dependencies today we discussed about if you want to maintain the dependencies what i need to do if i want to maintain the dependencies what i need to do if i want to maintain the dependencies what i need to do guys we need to use an scaffolding template guys so maintain this in the scaffolding template so that's the step you need to do go to the guys so this is my scaffolding template this is my scaffolding template and maintain the scaffolding template over here that's it so this is my json model and ui model json model so this is my i maintained in the curly brace i maintained my scaffolding template with a dependency object very good so i go to the scaffolding that's what that there are some dependencies that's why so here see i need to maintain a scaffolding template i need to maintain the dependent objects so json is in a dependent objects i need to maintain that in the scaffolding see this is my scaffolding sap ui define in the arrays curly in the brackets you need to maintain your dependent object so i went here i i i go to the scaffolding now i have maintained the scaffolding template with a dependent object and then i need to use this dependent object in my controller guys i need to use my dependent objects in my controller how can i do that so maybe uh, i need to uh, i need to have an a uh, one object for my json model in order to create an a object for that so you can you can maintain them uh, as an a model then that model you can use in your uh, logic guys so how you can maintain so maintain a uh, model json model and you need to use in the uh, you need to use in the function and uh, function controller here you need to so whatever it is there first one is the controller see guys so this controller sap ui core mvc controller for this the object is in a controller and i need to uh, i need on a one more object for my json model as well so here take this and here my this is my json model this is my json model so for this the first dependency the object is in a controller object the second dependency my object is in a wo json model so i need to use this dependency that dependency don't use all this now instead of all this i can maintain i can use my wo json model so i have instantiated my class i instantiated my class then i use this class i use this model wo model so that model i use in a set data now you can use save and now come here and refresh i think that that error should be gone now yes the error is gone now and 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 it's loading and also there is an one more problem in the set data see d is in a small even it should be in a caps guys set to data it's in a javascript upper camel case which we need to follow so maybe i did an a wrong spelling mistake instead of small d i need to put an a cap cap capital d and save it and again I refresh your page and and i should get an a employee number as an a thousand wow you can see the value the employee number thousand is low see guys richard is my hard coded value in the view see in the view the richard is an a hard coded value but here if you see the employee number 
the employee number came from my json model guys so now one by one one by one we are going to bind the data from the json model one by one we are going to bind the data from the json model instead of richard i go here i keep here the my next thing is my next field is what is that guys what is that first name right the second thing is the second thing is the last name last name uh, small and next one is salary next one is salary S salary salary and uh, next one is currency next one is currency currency save it and come here and refresh your page now i will get the data from the json model wow john richard one lakh inr is the salary wow what a beautiful concept binding so we binded the data from the json model so we we put the data on top of your ui screen guys that's an a binding so binding what exactly this is? what is this guys value value this is an a value value is an a property of an input button uh, input uh, element input control value is an a property of an a input control value is an a property of an a input control value is an a property of an a input control when you bind the data to the property of an a input control then we call it an a property binding then we call it an a property binding guys so value is an a property of an a input input control that's what i have shown in the sdk in the sdk i showed the uh, sap dot m dot input and input if you understand sap ui5 sdk that's it guys sap ui5 is done okay and object oriented approach and properties and here you can see the value maybe the value is not available here the value is available in the parent class ui core element i think so go to the uh, input base not core element input base in the input base you have a property called value you have a property called value so go to here and see this is a value value is in a property of an input button value is in a property of an input button when you bind the data to the property of an ui control then we call it's an a property binding guys then we call it's an a property binding then we call it's an a property binding guys so that's it for the day that's it for the day maybe so we talk the different types of binding new slide what exactly the property binding when we bind the data to the property of the ui control that we call it's an a property binding when we bind the data to the property of the ui control then we call it's an a property binding so that's it for the day guys so my i'm going to give some kind of exercise to you and you need to do that exercise so from now it's in a real data which we are going to talk about guys so till now we we used we used to uh, uh, do with the temporary data but uh, arithmetic operations and all but from now slowly i'm going to the real time side on the ui and so now my request you to do an one kind of exercise okay with the same uh, application with the json model with the binding property binding with the four fields with a one button so maybe my design is a is a like this and i need an a sales arc as an a input same same in the above what we did the same thing we are going to do here 
okay then distribution channel i want division simple three fields and i i need a submit button submit button maintain the data sales or distribution channel division in the json format huh? and submit button whatever i have designed the same way you need to design it okay i am going to share the share the ppt as well as i am going to share the json model and as well as i am going to share the uh, this thing as well the project as well guys so this project i will export i will export and i will share this project as well you can download upload the projects as well guys so i exported this so i will share this project as well you can see view you can see the controller everything index data every code you can see it huh? so you can refer my code and you can build an a simple application ui5 application guys that's it for that day and do you have any questions nandini single record yeah single 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 okay so any questions any questions okay no questions thank you see you tomorrow bye bye